London in the underground, 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 London in the underground. London in the underground, 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 London in the underground with your host Jimmy. London in the underground, 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 London in the underground with your host Jimmy. The music for all your needs with great personalities, bringing all our bands in the land to all broadcasts and news straight out from the fall. London in the underground, 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 London in the underground with your host Jimmy. London in the underground, 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 London in the underground with your host Jimmy. James, that is. And now it's time for this week's three song rock shocker. Two in your ear, one in your rear.
London Indie Underground with your host, Jimmy James. You're probably going to see Brandon Edie at some point, too, unfortunately.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the London Indie Underground Indie Stream Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Jimmy James. We're coming to you live from the Vault Recording Studio here at Adelaide and Princess. Just want to take this opportunity to wish you happy holidays. Hope everybody is well on your way into your festive, festivus, whatever it is that you do, whether you put up the Feats aluminum pole. Strength. Feats of strength, man. <laughs> Feats of strength. So thanks for tuning in. Very excited about today's program. And uh, welcome back, Brandon Eady. I feel like I haven't been here in forever. No, it's been a month, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, we had <laughs> three weeks. I hear some humming out there. Last time you were there, we were here, it was warm. Oh, one of these microphones is humming. Right Every time I touch it, I, don't want, I just won't touch it. Don't touch it. I will not touch it. Something's yeah, no, we had the three, the three weeks of uh, construction and whatnot. And then, uh, sadly, I could not be here last week. You know what? I think I'm going to have to do a uh, little troubleshooting here on some of these microphones because I think one of them is feeding back. And yeah, it's yeah. got to be that one there. So I'm going to cut to a tune here really quick and then see if we can figure this out. I apologize, folks. We'll get this thing underway here in a minute. Uh, in the min- meantime, let's uh, check out some alcoholies. This is flashback to 93 here on the London Indie Underground.
think we fixed it. No hum. Did we fix it? I'm touching it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Touch it. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, folks. Thanks for sticking around with us. So yeah, Brandon needs back. Yeah, it's been <laughs> about it's been about a month. We undergone some construction here, which uh, I don't know if you've seen the full extent of it. Although you did DJ a little party here, so you saw the uh, the booth. I did, which is pretty cool. I uh, did a little dance on the pole too. There's a pole. Oh yeah. yeah. You didn't see the pole? No. Really? I thought you were bullshitting. I thought it was a like a door that somebody was refinishing. No, straight up and down, man. We got a stripper pole. <laughs> Literally straight up and down. Straight <laughs> up, just like six o'clock. <laughs> yeah, and Excellent. it's and it's caged in, and there's even you know a really trippy uh, strobe light. Dude, cage poles. It's behind there. Excellent. Yeah, I That's don't great. know that it's ever going to get for used. The strippers who get like absolutely shit faced. That, that is a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we ever if we ever have uh, like a Indiegogo night or something. Indiegogo. Like that, then, then maybe we can uh, we can put <laughs> that to use. Circus. Much music. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? Two, two in the morning. Click. click nope. Yeah. <laughs> 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 then beyond that, uh, we also had um, across the stage here uh, because we facilitate rehearsals yep. here on the stage, and uh, you know our, our, our place is pretty big. So uh, as you can no doubt imagine, it's pretty costly to heat this this amount of space. Yep. So it was a uh, way for us to economically be able to manage the heat on the stage with a couple of space heaters and not have to heat the whole building if we're, you know, don't have a bunch of people here. But uh, but that said, it's a cold one out there tonight, folks. So make sure you bundle up if you're out and about. Uh, we encourage you to come down and join us here live in studio and to take in our band's performance today as we're joined by Fear the Hero. It's going to be coming up at approximately 9 o'clock for a half an hour performance. And we'll join us here in the booth for an interview and find out uh, about Junior, his band. So if you don't know Junior, Junior's... Uh, one of our techs here that uh, was a co-op student has been interning with us and uh, very excited to have his band perform here today. I know this was something that we looked at doing a little while ago, but uh, you know, as is the case with a number of bands, sometimes you have band members that change. Uh, but recently they uh, opened up a show at the London Music Hall, which I know he's quite excited about, and I'm sure we're going to get into some conversation with that, um, with uh, Searching for Satellites, Mandroid Echo Star. And I know they were thrilled about that. Uh, he texted me the next day and said, wow, that stage is huge. Man. Yeah, they were, uh, they were pretty ecstatic about it. Yeah, so. right on. I'm glad that I could do that for him. So how are you feeling today, man? I was said, uh, you know, I always, I can assume and guess by, the, you know, how you're feeling on Wednesday by the nature of your tweets and your posts on... At 3 uh, o'clock in the morning yeah. on Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great today. <laughs> do you? Yeah, for now. Uh, it was probably the late night Wendy's and then the early morning Popeye's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah, Popeye's no, chicken good, early. Good. Eh? Last night was fun. Two are always fun. Yeah. yeah. It was probably the slowest I've had in a while, but there were still 100 people there. Well, I mean, they were predicting that we were going to get some snow, and then I guess the next couple of days are going to be pretty brutal. Going to be a bit treacherous. Yeah. I know the temperature's plummeting out there, but uh, it's nice and warm in here. It's cozy. I'm yeah. Just, I'm excited. I like it. I'm glad that I was able to get my snow tires on before the next uh, big dump, too. <laughs> you mean it's snow, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Nope. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so we're snow tires to dump for. <laughs> <laughs> Going off roading, off road dumping, off roading. <laughs> so we got a, a couple other people on the couch here with us. So we got Josh, uh, who's a, a new volunteer here at uh, London Indie Underground, also uh, part of the MIA Music Industry Arts Program at Fanshawe. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, happy to be here. It's your first time here. Yeah, this is my first time. Cool. Here. You got a beer in hand, I see. Yep, great setup. Feeling cozy. Nice. <laughs> And we got uh, Riva is also here as well. Uh, Matt Dyer uh, is curiously absent. No, he, he had exams today. Uh, he sent me a text. He yeah. said, yeah, it was pretty crazy. So he wasn't able to make it today. So uh, send our regards out to Matt. But uh, li listen, I want to tell you guys, I really appreciate uh, you coming down here. Colin uh, from Texas King is, uh, is now interning here too. And uh, it's great that we're, we have a little community of people that want to get involved and, and try to support this thing and junior included. So uh, the more the merrier. And, you know, it's, it goes without saying that, uh, you know, the door is open. Anybody that wants to come and be a part of the community here uh, as we try to bring together all the best, in our opinion, the best musicians and personalities that are behind the music here in London, Ontario. In the southeastern corner of London. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Mr. Michael Marucci. Everybody. Knows. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good? Just good? What, you <laughs> fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I be not good? You know, and listen, uh, one, one thing, observation that I've, I've made about you is you're, you're a very crass individual. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you, you post stuff up online, you're like F-bomb city, buddy. You're, You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just because it's just I'm just really visceral, man. Yeah, just really visceral. Yeah, there's, I don't. That's mean, cool. I don't, Not that I there's anything wrong with that. Oh yeah, I don't mean ill. I just, you know, 
go right for it. You just <laughs> speak like Samuel Jackson. <laughs> I know. The white Samuel L. Jackson from southwestern Ontario. <laughs> yes. Well, you look nothing like him. <laughs> well, unless you compare me to Bla- Bla- him and Bla- Black Snake Moan. No, no, don't, because... No, we won't do that. I look more like Christina Ricci, actually. <laughs> Interesting. So, so which movie? <laughs> So, Mike, you got uh, some news coming up, actually. You got to see your release. It's going to be happening. Yeah, on, new sa- on Saturday. This coming Saturday, the Blackshire Pub. Yep. Along with uh, our friends in Messes, the offens- and Messes and Miracles, the Offensive Senses, and uh, City Canvas. City Canvas. Yes. Another good band from London. So, your, your disc, everything's done, ready to go? Got back to Masters? Everything's done. I finished the uh, Masters today with Peter from Rec House Mastering in Toronto. Um, and just. So they're off to the press right now, and everything's good. It's exciting times, man. I love it. We've been spinning the uh, the one single yep. that we've got here, and you yep. forwarded me the album, and everything sounds fantastic. Got to tell you, it's great Thanks, recording. Man. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 single version of Storms and Rain, and then the uh, album version are a bit different. Uh, the whole record was remixed like entirely at, at Phase One in Toronto, um, so for consistency and stuff like that. So in my in my opinion, the first single sounds a lot better than the version people have been listening to. So, I mean, hey, if you want to, you know, spin it and compare the difference, go nuts. That's up to you. But, uh, yeah, I'm really proud of it. Everybody in the band's really happy with it. So Very cool, man. Yeah. It's going to be a good night of music there. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right on. You going to be there? Yes. Yeah. I know. You'll, you'll be at home farting. But <laughs> that's okay. Because hey, uh, that's what he does <laughs> on a Saturday? Is that what you're trying to say? No, actually, he'll be busy. You'll be out somewhere. Farting. <laughs> Generally speaking, yeah. Generally speaking, yeah. <laughs> I will be out about on the town watching bands while farting. Can I see your ticket? <laughs> That's my ticket. <laughs> oh, you're Brandon Eady. All right, you come on. Fart in. and then walk by. <laughs> <laughs> the door guy doesn't ask for ID or anything. He's just like, oh my god. So this will be your first time playing at the the Blackshire since we have made some of the upgrades there as far as production. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And you It'll, guys are really going to enjoy it. The uh, the sound there is, is fantastic. I love playing there. Yeah. Honestly, it's such a great room. Everybody, it's everybody gets really tight and packed, and it's a fun place to play. There's a lot of vibe there, and it's and it's, yeah. Um, we're looking forward to it, honestly. I got to tell you, man. Pretty much every weekend there has now been pretty close to capacity, like at Good. least a hundred people that are flowing through that place, which has been awesome, and it's great for the bands too. And uh, but like I said, uh, I think the production is second to none, so uh, it'll definitely be a good time. I can't wait to, to come and check it out. And, yeah. and you know, having heard you guys before with your old singer, and then obviously with your, your new singer now, is uh, you know a bit of a departure from where you were before, yep. but at the same time, you know, still a lot of the same elements there. And, and yep. I guess kind of a testament to you know the, the fact that bands sometimes go through different members, right? You've Absolutely. recently had Cam- uh, Cameron Von Cameron yep. uh, depart the band, and now you've got uh, uh, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Uh, Mike Funk is now playing guitar, um, and he'll be making his kind of uh, premiere at the CD release. Um, we didn't want to make too much of an announcement about it because we just wanted to see people to see him play. Of course, um, he's been busting his fucking ass, learning everything. Um, just because I mean, there's a lot of a lot of riffage in our in our tunes and a lot of stuff to learn. So yeah, I want to give a big shout out to Mike because he's really stepped up um, to take a lot of responsibility on for the band and, and like trying to learn the material to keep up with what we're doing. Nice. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, but I mean, Seaborn, like we love the guy. He's like like with Eric, he's family. He'll always be a part of the band. Um, and it's just we don't look at it as him uh, leaving the band, just more stepping down as an active member. He's just not performing. Yep, so. that's fair. These things happen. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Life is life, right? Life is life. Cool. Well, we had uh, we had to take this past Friday off. Uh, from our weekly radio show at CHRW, which is every Friday, 3.30 to 6 p.m., as we were preempted um, by the, the the content, I think it was Women uh, in Voice. Yeah, it was 24 hours that day of uh, all women radio hosts uh, in, what was it, the uh, Anti-Abun Abuse Day? I forget what exactly what it's called. Something of that nature. But something to that extent. So, uh, yeah, sadly we missed it, but... We're back. But we'll be back. Last time we were on location at uh, David e. White. Uh, <laughs> Freezing. Yeah. Having the greatest time. Oh, man. It was, a, it was a great time. So we're, we're set up right on the corner, and there was a, a speaker that was put outside on the street, yes. right? And we were trying to lure uh, potential people to come in to, to have their mustache shaved off, shaved off and, and to donate $20 for <laughs> the cost. And also to be registered for two things, to, uh, to compete for a Guinness Book of World Records 
a new record, which the previous one was 250 mustache shaves. Uh, and the other thing, too, was they could, were entered into a draw for like a $800 $850 jacket. Yeah. So it was and pretty it was cool. Nice. And was they like were a nice uh, jacket. <laughs> it was. And they were, you know, feeding us hot chocolate and trying to feed us rum, too, and uh, which might have warmed us up a little bit. But <laughs> it was almost like we were heckling people as they walked down the street. They were like, you, hey, you. Oh, I, I yeah. actually was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you with the mustache. <laughs> Did you break the record? No. No. Uh, no. You know what? Who cares? Well, no, it was, it was a great cost, though. It was yeah. a great cost. And I've got to tell you, that Emporium is really, it's really sweet in there. I mean, it's a, it's a men's shop, right? So yeah. you go there, it's like, it's all men. You know what I mean? Which is, uh, there's no other way you can say that more emphatically. Like, uh, they got like a barber shop in the back. And then uh, obviously the apparel is all uh, towards the, uh, you know, the suit and tie kind of yeah, guy. Right? Very, very... High class, very posh, and posh and pricey. Yeah, but but you pay for what you get. That's true. Yeah, and you get what you pay for. It's just out of my range. So <laughs> we're uh, the exciting news though that came as a result of that, and and I, I like to think we did a great job on site. And uh, we're talking to to Derek Long, the the marketing director at CHRW, and they want to uh, to put us on location because uh, our show, you know, the time frame lends itself well to uh, to on location, uh, you know, events like that. So I think we're going to be doing. Doing a couple yeah, more anyway. There's some. He was saying there's something coming up at the Cup and Garden Market that we're going to be doing shortly. Yeah. We'll get into more of all that. But I'm excited. Yeah, yeah it's, man. Uh, it's a lot more scenic than sitting in the booth. Yeah. All That's, of the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Who wouldn't want to do a show at, CH, yes. at uh, the Coven? Yeah. Yeah. Right. In between breaks. Uh, just man, put go. me right in. The, put us right in the middle of the skating rink outside. I would love it. Yeah. Well, we'd be freezing, but we'd yeah. get some skates on. But I'd be freezing just as bad in the console. Yeah. Room. Well, we got to get some like wired up with some oh, yeah. remote mics and stuff like that. That'd be cool. Take it on the street. Take let's let's take it to Rogers too and be like the new Buzz. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking uh, the next uh, couple of Fridays we should probably dabble into uh, the Christmas music, which <laughs> there is no shortage of. Uh, of covers out there from Absolutely. bands, uh, independent bands from you know southwestern Ontario. A lot of them from Toronto. A lot of them right in our own backyard yeah. that uh, I've recorded. I recently got some submissions. I know the Marrieds did one. The Diatics have done a song. Uh, Lucky Widmore did one. Obviously, Stalefish, Beards of Prey. Uh, there's a number of bands here from London. So we'll do our best to try to feature some uh, some Christmas content. We've got, got some really good ones, I'm sure. Between yeah. Two, yeah. Because I've got stuff from. From the back catalog from, you know, five years ago and yeah. to new stuff like Beards and Stale Fish. And right that. on. Well, we'll see what we can do about turning out a... I don't know if we have enough content to do the probably whole Probably not thing. an entire... I don't know if I'd want to do an entire one, too. Actually, yeah. I probably would, but I don't think we have enough. To we'll be see fair. how it goes. So uh, I'm going to spin a track here from uh, Red Amber Green. So we'll spin your new single, nice. uh, Storms and Rain. And when we get back, i got to tell you uh, a bit of the tale of, uh, of my adventure with the salads here as we went into FM 96 nice. uh, and recorded our, our Christmas program that's going to be airing next Friday. But it was a lot of fun, uh, and I can't wait to, to hear it back. Uh, we, it was a little lowbrow at times, which is great. Oh, I heard all about it. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, from Sarah? Yeah, she came out. Well, you were supposed to come and watch the hockey game too, but uh, yeah, she I came out so. with Matt with me to watch the... Uh, the Leafs Bruins game and gave me the little lowdown and some, <laughs> <laughs> some pretty funny quotes. So. <laughs> it was pretty fun, man. We had a good time. All right, well, let's check this out. Brand new Red Amber Green. Once again, they're going to be performing this Saturday at the Blackshire Pub. Uh, $5 cover, doors at 9 $6. Cover. $6 cover, pardon or me. $10. Or $10 and you get a copy of the EP. Yes. Is it an electronic copy, like a download uh, card? or is it With the 10 bucks, you get, uh, yeah, you get a drop card. So a digital release. If you want CDs, we'll have we'll have hard disk there. Cool. All right, check it out. Storms and rain, red, amber, green here on the London Indie Underground. <laughs>
Messes and Miracles with the Captain oh. Shirley Drowns here on London Indie Underground. That band, of course, is going to be featured as well on uh, this coming Saturday at the Blackshire Pub, along with Red, Amber, Green, The oh. Offensive Senses, <laughs> and City Canvas. <laughs> what happened there? Oh, well, we got to switch the... We have no op tonight. Control room <laughs> is... There you go. Thank you. See, Junior, who's normally running ops for us, he's talent today, so... He's uh, apparently he's exempt. Sorry, I can do your job he's you. yes. <laughs> <laughs> now the question is though, Junior, can you do my job better than me? So I invite what? you to come over here and to take over the microphone. If, uh, oh yeah, let's have yeah, a full on Junior conversation. Yeah, because that you, would go great. Because you know what, clicking a few mouse clicks. I mean, that's important. Don't get me wrong, buddy. But uh, no, just no. That said, he's he's talented today, so he's he's exempt. He's got the night off. Yeah, he's got the night off. I'll just make the run back and his forth. Mom, his mom's here, too. I finally met his mom. Oh, yeah? Very nice lady. Nice. Yeah, she's uh, been a bit infamous because uh, you have to meet her. Uh, and, and Ajay was kind of pressing Junior to get her to come and introduce herself to, during... Hey, no, 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 no. Let's not... <laughs> So while, while he was doing his co-op here, and I had yet to, to meet her, but uh, she's quite excited to be here and, and obviously for uh, Alex to have this opportunity to showcase. And, and what we're trying to do here um, in, in featuring Fear the Hero is, uh, you know, some of the youth uh, in London, there's, there's certainly no shortage of talent uh, as far as the youth goes. We checked out their, their sound check earlier and, uh, you know, good band. So, um, and, uh, you know, maybe a bit edgier than, than what we featured in, in some of our previous week's podcasts, just as a... Yeah, heads up to you listeners at home, but uh, but nonetheless, uh, a band that's uh, really representing the uh, the youth movement. And, and, you know, I really appreciate Alex and what he does because he's a real straight-laced kid that's very passionate about music and what he wants to do and, uh, you know, all the stuff that he's done here and to try to help create awareness and obviously uh, working tech, which we're failing at miserably today. But uh, <laughs> with that said, uh, I'm looking forward to that. So a couple announcements for you. Uh, so this coming Friday, if you ha- aren't aware already, uh, Fault of Mine, which is a band that uh, performed as part of uh, our last industry night that we had here in London Indie Underground, uh, just finished up a couple of new tracks at EMAC Recording Studio, and we are actually going to be debuting it this coming Friday on our radio program in CHRW 94.9 FM um, from 3.30 to 6, so you'll have to tune in to check out the debut of that, nice. and I believe Do they're going to be posting up the video too yes. uh, through 331 Arts, which is pretty cool now. They had a, a casting call put out that they were trying to get some people to come out for some big epic uh, snowmageddon uh, snowball fight. But, of course, the, the weather uh, warmed up and, and a lot of snow went. So I, I guess they played a game of British Bulldog and they've oh, captured wow. this whole thing. So they put together the video. It's, uh, I know they're really excited about it. They did a performance in the attic as well. But, uh, but that cool. said, we're going to be debuting that track uh, Friday, 3.30 to 6 p.m. So you have to tune in. We'll probably put it on the Rock Shocker. Make sure to tune in because the two tunes rip yeah they sound great yeah and you know what else yeah. I, d- I did here too is uh grady came over and they had recorded uh a version of, of one of their songs that uh, is yet unreleased which uh, i'm pretty excited about it and he's like yeah we did this tonight and he sticks it on and i mean it sounds like obviously grady and, and, and team over there are pro pro um but he's like yeah we just did this tonight and, yeah it's just a demo and i mean it sounds better than you know <laughs> 99% of demos out there, you know. <laughs> so uh, pretty exciting to, to get our hands on that one, too. And, and it for, it's particularly for me, because I was privileged to play a show with them, and I, I think it was my favorite song to play, uh, just because of the grooves in it. So uh, I don't know if we'll be debuting that one on Friday as well, but I did suggest to him that he should send it, us, uh, send it in so that we can, uh, we can get on that. Right? Yeah. No, I know that they're, uh, they're really excited about the end product, uh, as they should be. Like I said, I've got them, and they sound great. Uh, I can't wait to unveil them. The video, the video, looks pretty good too. I was actually having a conversation with them, and they were kind of like, "It's one of those things where you know, you think that it's looking good, but then you're not really sure what everyone else is going to see." So they're a little kind of nervous, but excited at the same time. Nice. Well, I suppose that goes, you know, without saying, what anytime you put out oh, art yeah. up there, out you're there, always it's always subjective, right? Yeah. So some people yeah. might not always appreciate it. So yeah. I kind of want to switch gears here for a minute, and, and Greg Hatcher to joins us on the couch. Uh, hey, from music industry arts at Fanshawe and, and also the, the founder of Lackey Music Festival, mm-hmm. which uh, right now kind of behind the scenes, there's a lot of activity going on in preparation for some announcements that are going to be coming within the next few months. Yeah, totally. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, some uh, some exciting things that are potentially happening here. So uh, I don't know what you can talk it's about. starting to ramp up. We did release the date. So it's uh, June 27th to 29th. We're going to run it three days this year. Uh, starts on the Friday night and goes till the 
maybe eight o'clock on the Sunday, so it's not because it's not a long weekend this year. So we had to kind of compensate for that. Um, I'll be taking the Monday off. I'm sure a lot of people will be because Canada Day is on the Tuesday. But uh, for those who you know uh, can't afford to take the day, the Monday off, we'll uh, we'll cater to those and. Still have a great weekend, two nights of camping. Um, location isn't quite set yet, but um, uh, we're working on it. I've been talking to counselors in the area of uh, Plimpton, Wyoming, so Kamalaki, Ontario. Uh, I've got a, they've got a meeting on Friday that they're going to be discussing such things, um, <coughs> permits, location, all that stuff. So they're going to get back to me on all that stuff. So Very cool. Pretty excited. Yeah, this, uh, obviously I'm, I won't share all the details that I've been privileged to, to view with uh, with my own eyes, but uh, i got to tell you, man, that lineup that we've got is amazing. There's going to be over 40 bands yeah. and a lot of like a lot of my friends' bands, but they're all awesome. <laughs> yeah, and at the same time, there's still some spots that are open and uh, there's still some conversations that are ongoing. Yeah, um, I'm constantly shifting the the thing around the puzzle piece around the yeah well the more you get on board right that you you got to try to figure out where you're going to fit them exactly. in exactly yeah yeah i was Working very exciting on some headliners man. and stuff and uh yeah news to come very cool yeah i'm excited man i'm excited it's always great to see when <laughs> you know when people uh you know on grass uh, ground floor grassroots stuff when yeah when people are trying to build something right so i guess it's no different than when you think about what we started here which was just <laughs> a you know couple of guys broadcasting mm-hmm. out of a small room and it kind of ballooned into into something exactly. that became kind of cool time, right it's good to start small and yeah yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a small committee and we're working hard every day it's almost like a full-time job already so. yeah well, I admit <laughs> but it's a lot of it. fun though so. yeah well we'll uh do you know when we're going to be making the announcements as far as of uh, uh lineup and stuff yeah uh, probably won't be into the new year uh, maybe february can you tell so for people that are at home that aren't familiar with Lackey Music Festival. Can you kind of give them what you know? What was the motivation behind putting this together? What's the mm-hmm. vision of what you want it to look like going forward? Yeah, no, it was uh, supposed to be just a backyard party, and uh, my buddy Dan Tice's backyard, big field. Um, he was inspired because he had um, his neighbors or whatever had a um, it was a grad party or whatever. They had a little camp out in the back, and he's like, "Oh man, we should start." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you smell a little uh, wafting Some, there? Unless it's still lingering. <laughs> Maybe it's because you moved. And then, like, oh, it's probably the air pocket. So that inspired yeah. the uh, the camping aspect. And he's like, hey, man, we should, we should put some bands back there. I'm like, well, once I get something on the brain, it just goes. And I'm like, well, let's get a few of my friends' bands to play. And then um, I got a lot of interest um, just after I announced, like, four or five bands. And a bunch of other bands wanted to play, too. I'm like, yeah. can we turn this into a, like, a whole day festival? And Dan was like, sure. Let's do it. And then the ball kept rolling, and I'm like, well, can we do it the second day, too? <laughs> and he's like, all right, let's do it. So it ended up being 22 bands in the first year. Um, pretty DIY. Like, we built the stage, brought our own sound system, rented a generator. I did sound for two days straight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing that this year, right? Uh, but it was a lot of fun once the bands were done. I mean, the whole day was fun, but once the bands were done, you know, we got to have a few bevies and... Uh, you know, just camp out. And yeah. Yeah, like the we talked to the mayor because they were a little concerned about how big this party was going to be, as they always are. And um, they thought, you know, 2,000 people invited on Facebook was going to mean that there was going to be 2,000 people, 2, people yeah. there, which, you know, there was about 300 there over the weekend. So yeah, it wasn't as big as they thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah. It was about on par with what I thought it would be. And uh, we got no complaints. I called the counselor today. I'm like, how did it go? Like, did you get any complaints last year? She's like, no, it was fine. It's great. You guys shut down the music when you said you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah, great, it all worked man. out. So, going f- forward this year, we've taken a, a step up, but not too big of a step up. You know, uh, adding a second stage is something I wanted to do. Um, so, alternating, so no downtime between bands. Um, more things on the grounds to do as opposed to just listening to music all day. Well, uh, I'm still working on some ideas, but. Uh, come up with some kind of uh, alternative to to the bands just in case you need an ear break like lawn darts or something sure some <laughs> games are always fun darts. yeah Corn, cornhole tournaments corn, there was cornhole last year yeah. yeah so little things like that 
So aren't um, lawn darts? Aren't they, you can't buy lawn darts anymore, right? There. Yeah, you can. Oh, they can, can you still buy it? But they're not the same as. They're not the same as they used to. No, because back back in my we used to play lawn darts. Was one of the well, they were really pointy games. back in the day. Yeah, right? yeah. And now they're a lo- lot thicker. So well, don't. that goes without saying. I mean, if you look at a lot of like kids' toys from yesteryear and yeah. you know a lot of stuff, they I mean they just really didn't. Ki- but at the same time, you know when I, I can't speak for you guys, but when I was a kid, we you know rode bikes and we didn't wear helmets yeah. and you know. <laughs> And oh, the we jungle were, gyms we at school were, were death traps. For the most like, part. <laughs> man, I fell off those things on a daily and, basis. And now it's like everything's too safe. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's in a bubble. I mean, yeah. we're getting really <laughs> ridiculous now. Even, you know, when you look at some of the, the stuff that they're posting online yeah. about harassment and, and racism and all this kind of stuff. It's yeah. like, you know, we're, we're sheltering, you know, our, our, our kids from too much. You know, let them play lawn darts, man. Give them the lawn darts. Exactly. Well, you know what? I mean, I think that... They, maybe they don't give kids enough credit. They're, they're pretty savvy and they're pretty clever and they can figure some stuff out, right? We don't need to uh, to spoon fed, feed them life. But that's why I'm worried about the next generation. Yeah. <laughs> I know, man. I know. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's up to the parents, right? The parents have got to be the ones that make that uh, those important decisions. But I'll tell you, a good decision that you can make is uh, getting your kid involved in music. Because uh, what better way to forge some relationships and uh, to explore their creativity, um, you know, I mean, music, uh, a lot of people will say that, you know, music, quote unquote, save them or, or whatever the mm-hmm. case may be. But at the same time, mus- people find themselves through, through things like that and, and through creativity. So uh, and I got to tell you, too, even right here in the uh, in the building that I'm in, there's a, a kids rock school downstairs where they cool. teach kids, uh, you know, how to, to play not only an instrument, but to play with other kids. Right. And it's uh, out of that has come some. Um, you know, obviously some friendships that were forged and some bands that uh, I was privileged to do sound here one night when they did a showcase. And I got to tell you, man, there was these young kids that they might couldn't have been older than 13, 14, covering a Rush song, covering uh, Tom Sawyer. And the drummer ripped. I'm like, who's this kid? He's making me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But he ripped. So, uh, yeah, I encourage you to get your, uh, get your kids involved in music. And I'm teaching some drum lessons too. Uh, now officially the AK Arts Academy which is uh, off of Fanshawe Park Road uh, by Hyde Park is now officially open. They just recently nice. got their final permits for the city because, you know, there's a lot of liabilities when you're, uh, you have a business and, uh, you know, it's a dance school as well as drama and the arts, music. Uh, so the doors are open now and I'm going to be teaching some drum lessons up there and teaching the kiddies how to rock. So I'm pretty excited about that. Sweet. But uh, I'll get some more information to you after. Plug, plug, plug. But uh, I'm going to get to a couple of tracks here, and then I think it's about due time that we uh, we get these boys up on stage and then in here for an interview. So That's I'm going to throw to some music here. Uh, I'm going to kick to this band, which you know I, I know obviously I've been talking a lot about, but uh, I just really like the song. I think there's some cool dudes. This is Ivory Hours with Two Keys here on nice. London Indie Underground. Great song. Great song. Exactly. 
sacrificed her bones for my ivory. Oh, you are the missing two, the missing two. Paper places to go. Everybody's telling me, but I still don't know how much more of this I can say. Cause all they're trying to say to me is a great big lie. Like all you need to heal the pain is go get high. I don't think they are.
Texas King with Paper Tiger here in the London Indie Underground. Before that, uh, Ivory Hours, Two Keys. Ivory Hours is going to be performing uh, December 21st for our London Indie Underground Christmas party at the Blackshire Pub. Stay tuned for more details about that. Quite excited about that date. So, i got to tell you folks, pretty stoked to, uh, to be able to support uh, this band here in London featuring uh, Alex Verrett, or as we call him, Junior. Uh, who's been volunteering here at London Indie Underground, part of a cooperative program that he was doing through school, but now just on his own time coming in and, and supporting any way that he can. But, uh, you know, it's uh, great to see some of our youth uh, that are, uh, you know, exploring music and coming together. And uh, and this band, who, like I said, recently performed opening for Mandroid Equistar, Searching for Satellites at the London Music Hall. I know they were quite thrilled about that. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to introduce to you today a brand new band called Fear the Hero. Hello, everyone. We are Fear the Hero. We're right here from London, Ontario. And that's pretty much all I've got to say, actually. This is, this is gonna be good. Yeah, um, the song, I wouldn't call it a straight edge song because we're not all straight edge. I am, but uh, the, the point of this song is I'm tired of going places and seeing my friends who can't do shit without a fucking bottle in their hands. You know what I mean? I just wanna go back to the days back when it was like when we were 10 years old where you could show up at their house and go do something without being fucked up out of your minds. And that's exactly what it's called. What we were done? You're not alone. 
amateurs. This is a song that's about uh, not belonging in your home, whatever home may be. friend here mentioned, it is about not feeling like you belong. This is that last song, man. And, but it's, it was a bit more than that when we were writing it, because it, we were mostly thinking about, we don't try to conform in any way, but we're watching those who do, and you can still pick out the odd one, and even when we conform to the things that 
we like to just because that's the way it is. It still doesn't always feel like we belong. So basically, it wasn't just literally finding a home, but more finding like your own place, I guess. And that's my sentimental bullshit for tonight, so. Let's go! 
one that was vendetta we call it and we've got NEP coming out soon self-titled and that's I think one of the songs is gonna be on it so if you liked it make sure you check it out final track apparently I'm supposed to be stalling but I prefer to just have this awkward silence where everyone stares at him so all right um if I re am correct in this assumption. This next song is not original, it's actually a cover of a Stick to Your Gun song. And this one is called Empty Heads. So, if you don't like Stick to Your Guns, I would apologize, but I'm not like that, so. So this next one, this next one, this is our last song, that's really agitating, and I'm not kidding you guys, this next song, 
is all about killing rapists because I don't think a huge percentage of the population really likes rapists. Um, I've got a friend who's different from that, but we're not mentioning him. Um, and um, basically, there's nothing else to this song other than the fact that rape, um, that we were trying to think of one of the things that might happen in our society that you really can't recover from. And um, of course, all that has been done, it's definitely not easy. Um, no one's, I hope, is speaking from personal experience on either end of the stick. Um, and I believe this was also where you want to come in, unless I've said it all. This goes out to a particular person who, uh, for legal reasons I can't name. But, uh, we'll just take a look. <laughs>
is London's only independent music broadcast, showcasing some of our area's most talented artists, bands, and personalities. Tune in to CHRW every Friday from 3.30 to 6 p.m. while your hosts Jimmy James and Brandon Eady spin all the best indie bands from London. Listen in for show announcements, ticket giveaways, and band interviews. London Indie Underground on CHRW. Side Strays, which shit out of luck here on the London Indie Underground. Before that, you heard the combat with the haunting. Uh, Creekside Strays is going to be performing December 21st, London Indie Underground Christmas Party at the Blackshire Pub, along with Ivory Hours. We've got some more announcements coming up on that soon. But now I'm joined by our guests here in the studio who just performed in Fear the Hero. Gentlemen. How's it going? So, uh, listen, let's, uh, let's do some introductions here, because I, I kind of met a couple of guys in passing, but if uh, you can introduce yourself and to our listeners at home. So, who do we got? Uh, Junior. Alex Verrett. I'm Skyler. I'm Daniel. Daniel. And I'm Ryan. Ryan. 
Pleasure, gentlemen. Sounded great, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, yeah right on. So uh, this is for great. We yep. were talking uh, earlier about uh, one of your performances that you had recently, which was at the London Music Hall. I can only imagine for you guys and, you know, kind of thinking back to when I was younger and we, when we got to some of those, the, the bigger shows, right? But I got to tell you, I've, I've only played on that stage once, too, and uh, <laughs> it, it must have been uh, pretty surreal for you. That was, that was uh, a huge experience because we've never, before then, we've never played in a stage like that. Like, we, our first show was at the Eastern Star Temple with Skynet. Uh, then we played... Uh, an autism benefit show in a backyard, and then where did, we, where did we play after that? And we uh, played at the like, Rocks on King. Rocks it was a King. rooftop show, which is pretty <laughs> cool, crazy. but yeah, uh, yeah not this, not nearly the caliber this, of that. This show we played at the Music Hall, it was just like this huge step up for us, and it was like, it honestly it blew my mind, like going from playing in like crappy little bars in like our friend's backyard to playing on this huge stage. It was just nuts. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think especially for me because I'm I'm the newest member, so I only joined relatively recently. Oh, there goes my voice. Um, <laughs> and I think before the music hall, I'd only done a single live show in a basement. So suddenly <laughs> jumping up, yeah. And uh, this was I hadn't even attended. Um, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it has, and I I hadn't even been to see a show at this new hall so um just seeing it all it was incredible more than i could have ever expected right on very cool i'm very uh, yeah. very happy for you guys and, and obviously you know junior here that's <laughs> been talking an awful lot about the band and and with quite you know a lot of excitement obviously and i know during the summer months there was a i think there was a lineup change right did you yeah yeah well we got well, I shouldn't say we got rid of, but we parted ways. <laughs> what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> parted ways. It was a mutual It was a mutual It was mutual. Uh, our our ex-vocalist, Zach Kohler, um, he did vocals for us. I mean, he overall, he was an... I'm, I'm not going to say he's a terrible guy, but like he... We, we got along with him at times, but okay, he was really? awful he guy. was a good guy, <laughs> and it, he was a he it. was a good vocalist. But he, he the the a, problem yeah. was, um, we didn't get along. We didn't want to go the musical direction that he wanted to go. He was pushing. He wanted to be in a in a metal band, and yeah. as you can tell, we're not a metal band. Um, As we hope you can tell, there are some others who yeah. don't know the difference. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it, it, we, got, we got called well. a screamo band, which was really surreal. How, how would you define your music? Um, oh, well, that goes it. back to when I, me and Alex had the conversation to start the band in the first place. The it was like we were kind of like roaming around in the winter, and we had just gotten out of actually a deathcore band, which was weird, and. What, what we <laughs> He's shaking his head over there? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain the story after, but continue. Yeah, but um, <laughs> what I will correct happened? you momentarily, yeah. but continue <laughs> because we, Alex and I, we have very different musical tastes. That's uh, like, how we mesh. Yeah, That's, and like I, I listen to pretty much. I listen to other stuff too, but I listen to mostly punk, and he listens to mostly like post-hardcore stuff. And the, the goal was we wanted to meet in the middle, start something where we could have that energy from punk but still draw on like the emotions of post hardcore to kind of to kind of uh, to complement the punk sound okay. if that makes sense to make it something take that raw anger out of the punk and make it some make it something sort of show the feel yeah emo more emotional than just raw anger yeah, yeah. yeah. so no, when we first started it was a pop punk band Kind of was. Yeah, we were a pop punk band, and then we were like, Wait, is, we don't know anyone yeah. that can sing, so let's just. Yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, let's well, go that. Direction. That was a thing. <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, well, going back to what Skyler said about like coming from a deathcore band, we were. <laughs> here's the thing. We, we, we were like a couple of guys. It was like six or seven of us or something. Yeah, there were six. It was six like piece. two vocals, uh, going to be like two guitars, well, obviously bass and drums, but like we were with. Like one of uh, my friends that I was with, with that we were friends with, his yeah. name is Alex Cote. Uh, Cote. Um, we go and knock on Skylar's door this one day. He's like, "You <laughs> play bass, right?" He's like, "Yeah." Okay, you're in a band. And uh, that's literally how it happened. Yeah, I had no it idea it was gonna happen. I was like in my pajamas, <laughs> and they just show up like, "You're playing bass for us." I was like, "All and right." Yeah, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we all every person in that band had a completely musical 
uh, like complete complete musical difference, and um, we kind of just figured out that we weren't all dedicated to one thing. So um, after that, we were like, okay, well, we have to get rid of this person, this person. But then these people that were left were all like kind of meshing together, like me and Skylar, obviously. And then we met Daniel. I he was in my woodshop class at school, and then I, <laughs> that was a fun. Story. That was a fun. Yeah, that was, I was that okay. Was, I was a little in, woodworking. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was in this woodshop class. And I saw him, like, the first, the first few weeks, I, like, we sat at the same table. So I saw him, and he always looked, like, angry and pissed off. So I'm like, I'm not, I wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't pissed off, like You look like it. That was the thing. because so I didn't I was know like, anybody. I was in, like, I was a grade uh, 13 kid in yeah. a grade 11 class. But I was like, I'm not going to talk to him. And then there's just literally just this one day, like, out of nowhere, I had no idea who he was. He just walks up. He's like, you play drums, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I do. And he's like, all right, you're in a band. I'm like, okay. Well, that's we literally knew, exactly what I knew. That's hardcore recruiting right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he had similar music, musical tastes. So. Well, yeah, yeah, we met. You guys met through Josh Barrett, though, right? Yeah, yeah uh, one yeah. of our mutual friends, Josh Barrett. Uh, well, Josh told me about Daniel, and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go up to Daniel and be like, yeah, balls to the walls. Balls ask to him, the right? walls. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's kind of I don't know. After after we kind of parted ways with the other per- people in our former band that formed this band. We kind of all came together and we're like, okay, well, what do we want and how are we going to yeah. make it? And then we said, well, Skylar said, like, we, we love, he loves punk. I, I do enjoy punk, but obviously not as much as he does, but I, and I do love post-hardcore and all those surrounding genres. Um, and then we're like, okay, well, let's mix that together and see what we can do. And our first couple of songs that we uh, put together, we're like chilling uh, with my bros, chilling in the with bros in the hot, in the hot <laughs> Well, okay, that's he, not how he it, tried to write lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was. Can horrible. I have a copy of that tune? Uh, I think like we only <laughs> we only got like two li- we got like two lines into the song we were like Alex stop. <laughs> so what what were the words? I, Chilling with my bros in the hot summer heat, and then it was like something 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 got slip ons on my feet. <laughs> okay, and I like I saw that. them. I wrote that. that I, was did not, you I wrote did that. not write that. And rolling with my homies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cali core. <laughs> so anyway. But no, you wrote you wrote the song first. You wrote the song. It was called Summer Song. And it was yeah. it was a cool song. It was yeah. It, it wasn't was us. It was like pop punky, hardcore. I don't even know what to call it. It had a breakdown. It, it had a cool. breakdown. It was <laughs> cool. It was a cool song. It had a breakdown. And then Open he, street. He, wait, no. He, he, writes, he writes the song and he comes to us one day. He's like, guys, I wrote lyrics for it. And he had like three lines. We were like, this. I wasn't this, finished. This entire song has to go in the garbage right now. Like it's it was terrible. Yeah, yeah we so, played so, it. There you go. Now. Okay. We played it <laughs> at our first show Sadly. at the Eastern oh, Star. Oh, no. And surprisingly, it did actually get um, some good... It wasn't, like, like horrible feedback, but people were like, oh, it was okay. That whole show was weird. Like, that, our yeah. our sound at that first <laughs> show, because we didn't really... Well, because we had, like, a deathcore vocalist who was, like, yeah, 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 screaming, and then we had, you know, us... Some like hardcore punk kids. Yeah. Finally, I can chip in. Um, I attended the show <laughs> oh, before I joined the band, and I mean, I, I wanted to be supportive, but I also didn't want to be seen with them. I'll put it that, way. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one of the most honest things I think anybody. Yeah. Said from this podcast. Come on, man. We're just trying to put all that behind us at this point. <laughs> yeah. Put it yeah. Yeah. We just that those first three shows that we did were so weird like for us mm-hmm. musically because like like I said we were we were mixing genres and we hadn't we hadn't found what mix was right yeah. and it sounded bizarre because one song would be all like upbeat and stuff and then like the next song would be like <laughs> like breakdown breakdown de breakdown it was, okay we didn't we didn't jerk the breakdown yeah we kind of did. Every single song was like a series of open chord breakdowns. It was, though. That's the funny part. <laughs> well, because I'm the guitarist, I guess we're all going to look at me. And say, <laughs> you wrote the songs. You wrote the yeah, song. I'm, I'm looking at you too, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at him. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. I wrote them all. At the time, yeah. at the time on, man. I was still like new to actually being in a band and like being being in a band that I knew was gonna actually you know, you know like go somewhere so 
I didn't know exactly like what to do. So I was like, oh, well, this sounds good, and this sounds good too. So I'm going to put those together. And then and that's, that's a song. it sounded really bad after I looked back at it, especially Summer Song. Like, Summer Song, like that one riff was, was okay. It was okay. But I, like the rest of it, it was just like 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 the same breakdown, thing. Breakdown. I wouldn't mind revisiting a little bit from no, that song. Stop it. If we were... Okay. <laughs> well, well, we'll save that for later. But yeah. yeah. Essentially... I think you were working on the summer song when we were at the other space there. It used to it come like, bang. Yeah, 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 yeah the that. Beatles rip off, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did it sound like the Beatles? Yes, it was. A Beatles. Well, I not I couldn't hear it in context, but that just the rip Beatles? it didn't sound like a Beatles rip to me. <laughs> I but don't, I can do that. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. See, that's 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 what I'm thinking. I don't know how I can do that. So is, it's fair, is it fair to say, though, your sound is still still developing? Like, are you still trying oh, to find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we never want to restrict ourselves to one sound. And if our sound changes naturally, then that's cool. And because we won't fight that. Yeah, I think we are more than a hardcore and punk band. Yeah. Now, I think we are. But I think we're going to be, or we're going to continue to develop. Of course. Oh, Brandon. Develop and, well, when, we, when we started doing stuff. What? <laughs> oh. Listen, man, I was waiting to chime in. When we started, I apparently just did. <laughs> he chimed in on it. Oh, no, up in my nose. Well, he looked at you <laughs> and you looked at me and I was like, I, don't, I was just looking at you to begin with and trying to avoid eye contact with Jimmy. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> turn your back to me. It's not going to make it smile any better. Well, I'm just thinking maybe it'll avoid the. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no I, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But no, especially <laughs> with, especially with their slower stuff. Um, I never had ever thought that we'd ever do anything like that. Oh because, God, no! Mm-hmm. Like it's so like like you can like feel the feels, you know? Like like it's just yeah. It's Don't there. ever say that again. You can please. feel the feels, well, man. When no. we <laughs> when we started, where we kind of were emotionally and musically, slow songs were just not gonna happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, no, I can appreciate okay. that. Yeah, absolutely. I said I can appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think songwriting is a subjective thing where it, it can come from sometimes directly tied to emotions. That's why some people will say, like, yeah. love songs will always be, you know, the songs that people identify with the most, right? But mm-hmm. then again, you know, when you listen to a lot of punk rock mm-hmm. and a lot of that stuff, it comes from, you know, very different emotions, yeah. right? But Absolutely. at the same time, sometimes people just write, uh, you know, riffs or grooves just because you know they like the groove it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a deep-seated meaning behind the song it's just a something that makes you feel you know connected in some way to the to the rhythm or you know and that's why i think you know a lot of bands like breakdowns is because it yeah it gives you that right the breakdown isn't coming from uh you know oftentimes there's no vocals right it's just just guitar parts, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I can I can appreciate that. So a sure. couple of questions that I've got for you. So uh, I mean, I know you're relatively new with respect to how many times that you played. It's it's yeah, we actually had that many shows. No, us. but uh, but that said, I mean, you, musically, you guys have all been kind of honing your craft for some time. So first off, where can people find you online if they want to connect with you? Uh, well, we have Facebook, like everybody else. Uh, we don't <laughs> have MySpace. Uh, yeah. Believe it or not, we have um, we have Bandcamp. We have Bandcamp. With our whole one song yeah, so with far. Our whole one song, What's yeah. the address for the Bandcamp? I, it's just www.bandcamp.fearthehero. I think there's a one. Yeah, it's uh, it's fear it's the hero on what fear the hero one dot bandcamp dot com. Some, yeah, that's it. Um, it has FTP. The uh, our the first song was, we played yeah, yeah. is it's, it's more of a demo though. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a demo it's is funny. what it is. Um, we are we are actually currently recording an EP with Hunter Bennett of Catalysts. Um release date soon <laughs> no no set date um but on, on shortly EP, after the new year we're nice. the song that's currently on the band camp we're revisiting it uh tweaking it whatever we can i almost said twerking it um <laughs> yeah we do that too <laughs> yeah i do at least it, it, yeah, we, it would we, be relevant we didn't. and topical <laughs> yeah um it sound like a house do you guys have twitter <laughs> oh, we try uh, we actually yes, we do have Twitter, but yeah. it's not like, we don't like use it's it. not very active. I mean, <laughs> I was gonna we, say we, I didn't even we know we had Twitter. Yeah, we have Twitter. It's not active because we use it, but it's linked to our Facebooks. So like every time we make a status on Facebook, we have the illusion that we're active on. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, I got you. Exactly. Um, I think finally, I actually designed as a website. Um, <laughs> well, how? Why? <laughs> Well, explain. I wanted to. No, but no, cuz um through school. so I I'm a first year university student and uh, just as one of my assignments I had to make a website about something that had to do with me. 
Um, I chose the bands and I <coughs> really based on the criteria, it ended up becoming what I thought was um, pretty decent, I'll Not say, decent. so I don't sound too full of myself. Yeah, it was okay. Um, it's okay. I mean, like, obviously it's nothing too high tech, but um, it, I, I thought it ultimately came out better than I expected it to when I began it, so. Very cool. So you guys have any shows coming up uh, next little while or playing, anything planned? We're playing Nick Garrison's basement That's uh, on the 20th. <laughs> Nick Garrison is a friend that we have. He's in the, he's in a band called Yours to Take and Strength of Numbers. Uh, yeah, we're playing his basement. It's a Christmas show. Every band's playing like a Christmas song. We're not playing anything, uh, you know, like a stereotypical Christmas song. We're playing. What's the song called again? Uh, it's you? called "Killing Myself for Killing Christmas." Yourself for Christmas Crilling, by Killing yourself puppies. for Christmas by Sick Puppies. Yeah, but our own take on it. So. We haven't actually yeah. learned the whole song yet. I've learned no, the whole song. No, we should song. probably do that. You guys it's like, it. it's probably it's like in like ten that. days. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll ask you uh, as soon as you get some stuff out. Obviously, you know where to bring it. Ah, uh, for sure. So we can bang it on the radio for you. The only thing, I, we, obviously, we can't play on CHRW anything with expletives in it. Yeah, so. you won't be able to play us. So, well, I mean, you can certainly get a, well, you know, a well, no, we, we radio do edit. Yeah. But I always find radio edits are really funny, especially when the song is laden full of expletives, because yeah. it's just like constant oh, yeah. beeps. Really. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except for except for one of our songs, there's not really that much. No, there's not. Well, except for what's the song? Wanderlust. Wanderlust, yeah, and that's just we F-bomb just... after F-bomb after Yeah, I can't <laughs> play that one. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, uh, I mean, as, as long as it's, there. like, you know, obviously the, the the harder curses, I mean, if it says, you say shit in a song, we can play that, right? That's mm-hmm. not a big deal. Yeah. But, uh, but as long as there's no F-bombs, N-words, uh, oh, MF-bombs, oh, no, 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 none of that no, stuff. No, no, no. Yeah, no, not no, that no, I would think that you would have any songs that would feature some of those words, but you never know, right? Yeah. All right, fair enough, gentlemen. So, listen, we're we're kind of, we're at the 10 o'clock mark. Oh, so really? uh, oh. time just flies, right, during these podcasts. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It was great. So I will be uh, uploading this for you so yeah. you guys will be able to go back for reference. Uh, and obviously it's <coughs> going to have the video and audio with it so you can use it for promo or yeah. whatever you need to. And, and like I said, as soon as you get some stuff, make sure you send it to me. Cool. Any final uh, thoughts before we sign well, off? thank you for having us. We've been waiting for this. Like, Josh shouldn't be, be saying we're waiting for it, but we've, we, we've been uh, looking forward, looking to, forward yeah. to having this opportunity Oh man, for Pleasure. a very long time, we we're so mine. happy we're here, and I should say in person that we were really happy to play the music hall. That was yeah. that was huge for us. And this is huge for us too because I mean, I personally enjoyed your reaction when I texted you telling you that I was moving to the big room. <laughs> oh man, so when I found that out, he told me, he told me, and then I texted you, seeing if it was for sure. And I uh, I was actually Christmas shopping with with my girlfriend, and uh, and I was like trying to get her attention, like. Look at this! Look at this! And she's like, "Oh, okay, cool." Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you not understand what this is? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, it was we man, going from like thinking we were to play at Runrunners to like the new renovated music hall. Holy shit! Kicked ass. <laughs> that yeah, that was just the coolest experience of my entire life. And I'll everything, never mm-hmm. everything with this band has just like, honestly, it's just started to get so exponential. Like, we started out and we're playing, like, basement shows and all this stuff. And then well, we're still going to be playing basement well, shows. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. But just the last couple of weeks, just, like, poof, just completely Amazing. blown out of the water. Well, I'm really happy we let, yeah. uh, we could be a part of that experience for you. Yeah. And I, um, Gentlemen. I also just wanted to throw in how um, oh, I had something and I've lost it now. Ryan. Um, <laughs> basically, um, not only that, but for me, too, because, like I mentioned before, um, I just recently joined, um, kind of fall in with them actually, how they walk up and say, can you play bass? Oh yeah, you're in a band. They come up to me, can you sing? No. Right. Okay, yeah, you're in a band. <laughs> no, no, no. Good. Good. You're singing. Yeah. Good. So, um, Good. <laughs> take what we get. Yeah, basically, um, I never really got to experience all that other stuff. So for me, it's a complete change of... Yeah. Well, I, I, at the, at the well, you played yeah. one show with us before the music hall. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, what you're so saying is this is the first band you've been in. Oh, yeah. Well, there you it go. It is. Well, yeah, awesome. we, um, we, we came up to you. He was just our friend. We were like, do you want to, like, just come screw around and come practice and jam with us? Yeah. yeah. And he ends up coming over to my house one night. We're just in my basement listening to music, yelling and screaming. And we're like, dude, you can yell. <laughs> you, can say, you can yell. <laughs> you can yell pretty good. We were yeah. Like, like, all right, That's let's okay. go. All you can you, like, write angry stuff? Yeah. Was yeah, because um, I I so. actually write like uh, novels and whatnot in my free time. It's just one of my hobbies. So um, I'm the primary writer for the lyrics, and it's 
that's actually maybe one of the most nerve-wracking things. It sounds really <laughs> odd, but um, sometimes I'm more nervous with when I have these lyrics, and I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna throw throw the paper at them and see what they say mm -hmm. about it. And, um, yeah. Oh, no, I, I have to say that everything that Ryan has written, especially after our other vocalist, everything that he has written is everything that we wanted from the beginning. And that yeah. means a lot. Everything, awesome. we, everything he's written is everything we want. And the, the the best part about it too is the stuff he's writing, is where kind of where we are, with what we want it to be too. Like, the stuff he writes about is like what I'm thinking about, what's going in my head too, and like from what I hear, what's going on in their heads too. So, it was just a natural fit right from the beginning for us. Like, um, very cool. If you believe it or not, I think essentially our practices are 50% play music, 50% talking. Mm -hmm. And yeah. out of those talking sessions, um, that's when I actually pick up a lot of different viewpoints from everyone. Um, uh, uh, it's not where the Killing Rapist one came from. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, that that yeah. was like, we're going to write a song about Killing Rapists. Yep. They're the, going to write the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. You want to be angry, that's, that's all we're yeah. doing. Yeah. Amazing. All right, gentlemen, we got to wrap this thing up because we're after the 10 o'clock hour, yeah. so I want to thank Sorry. you guys for coming in and performing with us today. That was amazing. Awesome. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. And, uh, you know, it goes without saying anything we can do to support. If you have any shows coming up, uh, you know, please connect with Alex and we can do our best to promote that. I want to thank uh, Revo over there who's running ops for us today. Uh, well, only only during the second half when I, we realized that I was failing miserably, miserably at doing both because uh, you had the night off. And uh, Mike, always good to see you. I'm just kidding. Brandon, do you have any stuff coming up over the next little while that uh, you need to uh, get out there? He'll be sharding. No. I will not be. I haven't really done that. Oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to touch this mic right now. Uh, what's coming up? The only thing that I've got coming up in the next little while, uh, before the new year, there's lots of good stuff coming up in the new year. We're announcing more and more every day. But uh, on December 20th, Friday, uh, it's the Summer Camp Productions' third annual Tristan Christmas Party oh, yeah. uh, at the London Music Hall. Done this every year. It's uh, supporting La London Food Bank, so it's $7 with a canned good item. I right, We got like 450 pounds of food last year, which was amazing to drop wow. off. Nice. It weighed my car down driving there. Uh, but it's a cool cover show. Searching for Satellites are doing a tribute to Thrice. The Acratics slash members of Baptize are doing a, a, a tribute to Good Riddance. Fox Fight and Blair are doing Silver Chair, and Mullet Corpse is redoing the Limp Biscuit stuff Which that they phenomenal. did at the uh, <laughs> November cover show. So come on awesome. out and support. Other cool, than cool. that, every Friday, tune to the radio show. We'll see you in the 6 p.m. We'll be back here next week. We're going to be joined uh, by Partners in Health, and we're going to have another industry night. So. As always, we invite you to come down here the Industry Podcast every Wednesday from 8 until 10 p.m. Uh, we're usually here a bit earlier, but please uh, feel free to come and join us. Also need to thank Mr. Greg Hatchett for once again running front of house. Woo! Sound for us. Yeah. Appreciate it. And I look forward to some announcements uh, about uh, Lackey Music Festival come in the coming months. But uh, obviously, we'll keep you updated, up to date on, uh, on what's happening. Yeah, man. And uh, Josh, thanks for coming today, too. Another That's MIA volunteer. Uh, we'll obviously uh, we'll get you guys more involved in stuff. I know today was a bit of a later day for you because you had uh, that exam and whatnot. And uh, Matt will be back next week. Cool, cool. All right, folks. So I want to thank you for tuning in to another edition of the London Indie Underground Indie Stream Podcast. Once again, my name is Jimmy James. We're broadcasting live from the Vault Recording Studio. Adelaide and Princess are going to leave you today with the Cobra Hawks with Man Out of Me. Have a good night. Thanks. Good night. Woo! Where's the camera? <laughs>